The box says only three miniatures, but I'm going to show you how you can make nine Nurgling bases out of one single box. And I desperately need this myself because I'm bringing 27 Nurglings to my next tournament on Saturday, which is today if you're watching this video on the day of release. So let's get started. So let's take a look at the spruce because I think when you look at the spruce, you can already get an idea of how I'm going to do this. Because we have one, two, three, four, five, six of these big chunks. So that's already six bases covered. And then we have a couple of loner nurglings, a little two on top of each other, next to each other. And we're gonna combine these with a bunch of bits and pieces from my bits box to make these all nurgling bases. And of course, I need some additional bases. And these are 40 millimeter bases. I'm just recycling the ones from my Custodes army because why would I play Custodes at the moment? And I'm going full Death Guard right away. So they look a little dirty and worn and used, but that's because a custodian guard was standing on that until very recently. So let me get all of this out of the sprue and cleaned and everything and then we'll move on. So what have I done so far? I cut everything, cleaned the mold lines and I glued everything that has a flat base to an actual base. And that way you already have a good division. So these are a little bit boring. They are a little monodimensional, you know, just one row of nurglings. Uh, so we're going to add a little bits of pieces on there. Uh, but especially these need a little bit of help because <laughs> that's not really a swarm of nerdlings, is it? And what I use for my base material or my bits and pieces are just leftover sprues from other models. So here's a leftover dreadnought chest piece. You get two of them in a regular Redemptor dreadnought. This is a leftover knight's sprue. Uh, the his here is some kind of land speeder thingy. And then I've got some space marine bits and pieces, some Blood Angel bodies, thank you Mario for letting me have these. And then some leftover bits and pieces from interceptors and just regular marines and so on. And these aren't mine. And, and no, I didn't steal them. I just bought them from my friends. They have these bits left over. They don't kid bash, they don't care. They're not gonna use this anymore. They just wanna get rid of it. I'd really, really go to your local gaming shop or friend group and just say, hey, I'll buy any leftover sprues for a little bit of money. I got boxes and boxes full and I, I just I just bought a shitload of stuff. So now I've got these bits and pieces. I'm just gonna start gluing them on the bases and then we'll go look at these little leftover nerdlings and figure how to fill out these bases. And I think I'm gonna have to cheat a little bit as well. Now I forgot to mention, if you're a Death Guard player, you might have a drone like this. And if you do, they have a faceplate but they come with multiple face plates on the sprue. So you have really good bits and pieces to add to your Nurgling bases. Um, but the whole idea, you can see it here, is to have a couple of big chunks in front of the Nurglings, because now we can start gluing these little Nurglings on top of them, and you have a bit more three-dimensional units. Rather than just one row of Nurglings, you can have a little one standing here in front on these little bits, and you'll have a decent Nurgling base. Um, I wanted to show you one thing though, something that's a fun little thing you can do. If you get a couple of Space Marine helmets, they have these nubs underneath them. So what we're going to do is we're going to snip these off and then we're going to glue them into a little triangular pattern on the base. And you'll see what I mean with this. What you'll get out of this is a beautiful triangular pattern of pus boils because of course we're going to use some basic material here and we're going to cover this up but if you can get them in a nice triangular pattern, let's move them around a little bit with this knife, like that. You smear in some Armageddon dust or whatever texture paste in there and you paint them nice and yellow, you've got pus boils on your base. Without any green stuff or buying these metallic half boil balls and now also the helmets, the base is flat, so they're much easier to add to these Nurgling bases as well. So you just scrape this flat and now you can actually glue the helmet onto a base too. Just a eh, little tip, if you want Nurgling stuff, get Space Marine helmets instead and your local Space Marine player has millions of these helmets left over because there's loads and loads on the standard Primaris sprues and loads and loads on the Tactical Marine sprues. Talk to your local Space Marine player, get a bunch of these helmets and you can have pus boils on your base as well. Let me show them on the top down camera so we can zoom in and I can show you exactly how they're positioned. Like this, really, it doesn't look like much right now, but trust me, after painting, I'll show you a little close up of these again and they'll look pretty cool. So let's take a look. I have these bases over here. That's really a small 
two Nurglings on top of each other, two Nurglings in front. This, to me, looks fine. If you look at this from a distance, it looks like a Nurgle Swarm. And even this, which is only three Nurglings, it's good enough. And then you have these two, which are more like the ridge of Nurglings, and then a little Nurgling in front. And compare that to one of these two. So, this one looks way better than this one, in my opinion. And it's just one Nurgling up front. It just makes all that difference. It's less one-dimensional, just not just one line of Nurglings. And this one is missing Nurglings. Now, the thing is, I'm done with my Nurglings box and I still got two left over with not enough Nurglings. So, like I said, I might do a little bit of cheating and it's time to show you this box. The Galapox Infected Kill Team. If you haven't heard of this box, it's by far the best Death Guard box you can buy ever. And next week I'll do a video about all the best bits, kits and proxies that you should get as a Death Guard player if you want to add more flavor to your army, even more flavor to your Death Guard army. And this one is by far the most important, the best one you can get. You get four Chaos Spawns. You get a bunch of Nurglings, you get a bunch of Grubs and, and Curse Mites, these things are called. A bunch of Flies. Imagine you use Cloud of Flies, the stratagem, and you can actually put down a marker with a Cloud of Flies. How cool is that? And these Nurglings, I'm going to use a couple of these to enhance these bases over here. And I like to use the Curse Mites for my once per game abilities, like the Terminator Sorcerer, the once per game power up, the, chaos, the little familiar that you can put next to it take it away when he uses it and then you get a couple of special pox walkers that can lead your pox walker squads by far the best box but if you want to see more of this kind of stuff like what can you get to nerglify your death guard even more or nerglify the sort of black legion models that you can add to your death guard uh, army then maybe come and watch next week's video and subscribe to get it onto your feed so they're done they're sprayed now it's time to paint them and i'm just going to paint one of them on camera and I'm going to start with some Plague Bearer's Flesh. And with this Plague Bearer's Flesh, I'm going to paint almost all the Nurglings, but not all of them. I want to have a little bit of variation in the greens that I'm using for my Nurglings, just to break up the miniature a little bit. But I'm just going very quickly with this contrast paint all over the miniature. And I don't care if I hit parts that I don't want to have Plague Bearer's Flesh color later on. Because it really is a very light paint and it's easy to paint over at a later time. Uh, so the horns, which will be brown, blood effects, the eyes, all of that stuff, it will cover over this Plague Bearer's Flesh uh, paint without any trouble at all. I wanted to show you a little bit more because these are the ones I painted on the camera just a second ago. So Plague Bearer's Flesh with a little bit of Mantis Warrior Green. This is mainly Mantis, Mantis Warrior Green and then some Orc Flesh in there. And this way, even from a distance, as you can see, you can still see your units apart. So it's easy for you and for your opponent. And your opponent can just say, oh, I'm attacking the yellow squad or I'm attacking the green squad. And you can keep your units separate from each other instead of just painting them all exactly the same. Now I'm going to add a few more paints. Hang on, almost knocked one over. I'm gonna add a few more paints and I'm going to tie them a little bit together with the basing and so on and so forth. So it still looks like one coherent army. I'll just keep painting these two, I guess, on camera so you can see the results. And the next step is to dry brush it with some Nurgling Green. This is a very light green, desaturated green paint and it's perfect for Nurglings. Yeah, name says it. And it doesn't matter if the base is this Plague Bearer Fresh Flesh or Mantis Warrior Green. All of them get this highlight. All of them get a little quick dry brush. Time for a little bit of detail work. I'm gonna use some Blood for the Blood God to go over all the these these holes in the nurglings all the hanging out guts and pieces the tongues and so on and so forth but i'm watering down my blood for the blood coat quite a lot because i want to have the green and well this yellow shine through through it and I'm using Blood for the Blood God for a very simple reason. It dries up glossy. Because I want this to look like it's already wet and nasty and bleeding. So why not just use a Blood for the Blood God uh, paint right away. It will dry up glossy, it will look wet, it looks like it's actually bleeding. And the red is really good to contrast with the green of the Nurglings. And, or in this case, the sort of yellow of the Nurglings. And then when this is dry, take some contrast wildwood and paint all the horns of the Nurglings. And this will make the heads stand out a bit more, get a little bit more focus on the heads and it will just also break up a little bit of the monotony of the Nurgling Swarm and you just get a nicer looking miniature and after that it's time to start working on the base because after that we can unify the miniature and the base together and make it all look like a nice whole model. 
And to prepare for that, I already did the sort of metal pieces that are on the ground, everything in contrast wildwood as well, because that way you can get some of the brown into the recesses so that now we use some typhus corrosion. You don't have to worry so much that you miss a recess in one of these pieces because I sprayed it with wraith bone, which is very light. And you'll have the risk that you can't reach a little piece somewhere deeper into the mini, into these little basing pieces. And then you have a white spot just jumping out at you. And so now with the Typhus Corrosion, it doesn't matter if I don't hit everything exactly right with this. And I can work much faster. And using a contrast paint on these pieces means that it just seeps into the recesses. And the contrast paint takes care of these white spots that are further deeper down. Now, after the Typhus Corrosion is done, I'm going to make a very basic uh, rust recipe with some scrag brown. Dry brushed all over these metal plates, followed by a light dry brush of... Riser Rust, and this is a super easy, super quick rust uh, paint scheme. You can make more intricate rust like I did with my Plague Burst Crawler that you can watch a whole video for that goes in depth on enamel rusts. But this is super fast, super quick, and I need this. I need to finish quickly. It's already Thursday and my tournament uh, is sat this Saturday, so I gotta hurry up. Then for the base, I use some Armageddon Dust. This texture paste is great. Uh, it's light enough that it will take on some nice dirt and grime later on. And yes, there's gonna be grime. Of course, it's gonna be grime. What do you think? And uh, with this, it's just easy to work quickly. And then you can wash it with Reitland Flesh Shade. And I'm gonna do a little extra here for the base because while the Reitland Flesh Shade is still wet, I'm going to add a little bit of non-oil on there too, just to have a little bit more interesting base sort of get a bit more color variation on the base there as well. Now it's gonna need to dry and then after that it's time for streaking grime. And if you've never worked with enamels it's really easy, nothing scary about it. Just it's a paint, yeah, you have to thin it down with white spirits rather than water. And over here I got a little cup that's 50-50 white spirits and streaking grime and I'm just gonna put, do a quick wash all over the nerdlings and a little bit on the base. But not too much because the bases of my plate marines and so on, box walkers, they don't have a lot of streaking grime on them. So I want to still retain sort of the same colors everywhere. And this, because it's diluted so heavily, it'll just work like a wash. And I don't really have to reduce it like you normally would with uh, other streaking grime painting uh, strategies, techniques. And this will dry up super dry. It will look very dusty and dirty. And that's great because then when you use a technical paint that will dry up glossy, you get great contrast. And it's not just contrast between colors I'm talking about. You get contrast between textures. These nurglings, they'll be slime. There's this blood, blood for the blood go that I used before. That will all look glossy. And then the, the streaking grime looks very dry and dusty. And so does the rust. And that way you get contrast between textures in your miniature. And it really helps. And it can help you a lot with having a simple paint scheme that looks really good because of this contrast. Contrast between colors and contrast between textures really enhances your paint scheme. And I don't know, I have a list here of the paints I use, but it's like 10, 12 different paints and that's it. And you'll have a decent looking uh, bunch of nurglings really quickly because of this contrast. Now, I'm gonna clean this up a bit, finish the base trim. And I'll show you the results. And there they are, 27 Nurglings out of only three boxes. It's a huge savings both in time and money because this is so much easier to do and faster to paint as well. It's just less Nurglings on the base, easier to and quicker to paint. I might do another two boxes, which will give me another 18 Nurglings because I really enjoy playing with this massive swarm, especially in team tournaments. If you can swarm the center, your opponent has nowhere to go and they're just locked in their deployment zone while you get to do all your objectives in the middle. It's a really funny play style, especially with another 60 pox walkers and 40 cultists. They just have nowhere to go. And if you enjoyed this video and this type of content, then maybe check out this video next.